Thank you for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics and it is Plus TV Africa. Now, we were talking about, before we went on the break, governors settling themselves and calling it pensions for life. Yet, we do not realize that this is how much it costs us every single year for these governors to live the life that, you know, is befitting for them. So, before we went on that break, we were asking, how did we get to this point? Where were we? Were we asleep when these things were being put in place? I remember when Governor Akpabio did his before he left office. There was a row in his state. But then Lagos and other states had this. But it was very quiet. Obi, I'll ask you because you are a lawyer. How do these things go under the bridge like water? I mean, it's not under knowledge. the bridge. L let's say that they have a constitution, they have a constituency meeting and they have townhouse meetings. How many people are where they have those meetings? How many people attend those meetings? And coming, go, going to address what he, uh, he was saying, that um, the members of the house have the same thing as they said. No, it is not that. It is that we, the electorate, are laid back. Yeah. Because if we rise up and know the sort of powers we have and make noise and say enough is enough, going to Twitter, going to Facebook, set up something in motion, they will back down, they will review it. Is it not too late in the day to go on social media about these things? Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom, but Let's it is, it's been going on. Who's going to say, well... I'm going to be the good guy. Never will you want to cut your nose to spite your face, would you? No, you would not. But uh, look at Zamfara. I don't know if it is a political statement they're making or whether there's a political disaffection. But look at the speed at which the house did that. When you put these people on the spot, they will know that there's no way for them to run and they will start respecting the demands of people. It's fine, you have a governor, the governor did it. It is too much. It, the, body, the cost of democracy is too much on the population now. How many people know that this is costing us so much? How many people are even aware to talk about even rising up to um, say no to it? How many people are really educated in that regard? Because, you know, we just go to the polls and monies are shared and some people vote. And that's it. Nobody really does a follow through to ask questions apart from a few NGOs like Serap who are, you know, always on the case of government. government. But aside from that, how many people really ask these kind of questions? Uh, to be fair, people do, did ask questions. Uh, this thing didn't come overnight. But what's the follow through? There's a history to it. Yeah, it was followed up and there's a history to it. But over a period of time, you know, a party setting, mm -hmm. people tend to ignore it. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is a country where it's one trouble after the other. <laughs> so the moment you are one, before you know it, something bigger, you know, comes on. And then the civil society tends to lose focus on it. And then you have the press also minded by ownership, you know, also tends to turn, you know, a blind eye to some of these things over a period of time. Uh, what you see is we need to understand the history of these things because if we don't know how you get to where you are, you will never know how to get out of it. In the first instance, it started under Obasanjo. When Obasanjo's regime at the end of the first time decided to monetize, you know, the um, facilities being enjoyed by uh, parliamentarians, you know, in terms of the accommodation, because it was costing government a lot of money. That look, we don't want to have anything to do with this. You buy the house, and then you live there, and all that, uh, because each time another regime comes in, they wants to refurbish yeah. another, and, and it's almost costing the same amount of money, and like building new ones. It was well intended, but over a period of time, they brought in Ramfak. Ramfak fixed salary and did everything to ensure that you will never be able to take more than what has been prescribed you know, in law. But what you see through the revenue forward, what you see our politicians did, what they did is this. They created so many sub uh, committees in the, in the parliaments, both federal and states, and then through that committee, they now, after collecting money for the CAS, you know, because they've monetized it, collecting allowance for the accommodation, they now decided that they needed CAS for committee work. And then through the committee, you now get cars again. You get new allowances and get this and get that. So then they built up, they realized the weakness that, look, uh, Ramfa cannot touch their pension. They are the ones to fix it. Mm -hmm. Ramfa 
cannot touch their um, some allowances, you know, and they are the ones to fix it. So they decided to build into that because you know, FAC is de dealing with their basic salary. So they built the whole thing in there in a way that it created public outcry. Many people complained seriously about it, but they ignored it. The politicians ignored the populace. The civil society rose up, they spoke about it, but they ignored it. And now, after that, that was when the governors now started theirs. When they realized that the parliamentarians got away with it, then you now have the governors coming in with their own list of heavy demands on what the public should pay to them when they leave office. And the same thing applies to former uh, presidents. And that's exactly what is going on in the country. It's a big grip off of public wealth. And what we are doing currently is we are not practicing democracy the way it's supposed to we are supposed to practice it, which is democracy should be for the people by the people. But in Nigeria's case, we have democracy, you know, by the elites for the elites. That is exactly what we have. And we find ourselves in a situation where what happened in Sanfara is just an isolated case. It's simply because a, another party got into power and the governor, governor decided to make a statement with it. Mm. I commend him, very brave man, because he should know that he will also not, he, be, able he will not be able to collect that allowance. Yes. So he's a very brave man. I commend him for doing so. But we should not forget the background you know, leading to that. Mm. And what Yari did was not a one off, was not new. new. Mm -hmm. Many governors that left with him did exactly that. The problem you have is if, whether a law is bad or not, once it's created by an act of parliament, it still remains a law until a superior court overturns it. Now, the problem I have is if you don't pay people's pension, you don't pay their salaries, you are holding them pension, holding them salary, and you are paying yours in advance, I have a problem with that. There is a moral that, that was my next question to Obi because uh, and um, sorry, um, this boils down to the constitution we have was a horridly made constitution. It should have been scrapped or should have been totally overhauled. At what if, point? I mean, we've we've not really had a constitutional conference lately, have we? We had one that uh, let let them tell us what is in that constitutional conference it was a comeback. that we had years ago. Let's start from there, amend those ones first. Because all this should have been in the Constitution. These people need pension, it should be in the Constitution. Maybe they should have joined the pension scheme, or maybe it is a state that will pay their pension. Should have been clearly written out. I mean, Working for four years, eight years, you want to collect pension. Uh, what is that done? This is my question. We have people who've dedicated 30 to 35 years of their lives working in the service who, of course, have had, depending on where they worked, you know, either joint pensions or the normal pensions. And some of them are dropping dead in lines because they're trying to get their pensions. Mm -hmm. Some of them never get to see those pensions. And the others are still waiting and asking. And I see very old elderly men protesting. It's everywhere, rivers, cross river. They're not paying these monies. But then governors are going up. They don't default in theirs. Mm -hmm. So I ask again. Where are Nigerians on this? Because you both said, oh, we followed through and you know, after a while we got tired. Are we really tired? Because the truth is, it's, it might not be you, Obi, because you probably have your pensions coming from a private firm. It might not be you. But you have family members. You could be your father, it could be your mother, who's not being paid. But the certain governor who walks after four years has his pension unstopped. When are we going to be tired to follow through on issues such as this that affect us. I remember when I was talking about this on the radio and an, an elderly lady said she's tired because she has waited for her pension forever. She's owing almost every small store around, around her area. Hmm. And it's very disgraceful. So how do, where do you start on an issue such as that? You see, until we, the owners of Nigeria, know that we're the owners and we have the road, and not the governors or the president. That's when we start. We have to realize the powers we have. And until we will the it's not it's not going on the street and saying you want this, you want this. Know your member of the House of Rep, know your senator and start writing. Those letters make a lot of difference. Those letters make a lot of difference. Start phoning them, start calling them, make a lot of difference. 
How many people even know where the constituency offices are? How many of those offices are really It is open? for them. Again, if you said that there was an uproar mm. and that didn't make any difference, what difference would a, would a letter from a constituent make? Mm. It's just like, you know, like um, the security board. People complain about it. Where is it in the constitution that you can uh, collect you security an board and, not, yeah, and then not, not um, Account. audit it? Mm. It's not in the constitution. The Nigerian ruling class is only doing what they feel like doing. Mm. The problem is, is not about people complaining or not complaining. But we face a situation, it's just like, if you really get an election now, it's a simple problem, go to court. That's what you'll be told. So if you t still public wealth, go to court. And we have seen governors, former governors taking to court, and the cases are still ongoing. If you look at, let me give you a good example. Look at Ayodele Fayoshe's case in um, AKT. Since his first tenure, he has cases still ongoing, eight, 10 years on, which we've not been able to resolve. So in fact, those who are looting the wealth actually prefers the court because they cannot use the slow will of justice you know, to ensure that they enjoy the loot for as long as possible. So, Obi, this, is, can this I, is a direct slap can, on can, your can, face. Can, can I talk? What, what is the court going first to do of to all, help us? First of all, before you can talk about the judiciary, separate the judiciary from under the government. Make them independent. Make them a direct line to their payment directly from the federation account. Then they can talk. It's not when your salary, somebody is paying your salary, you cannot talk to the person, you cannot do much, except do the little you can do without incurring the road. But you all take oaths mm. to do a job. You don't take an oath to be loyal to your boss or who's mm. paying your salary. So where does that oath even come in? No, that, that oath is for you to abide by the truth. Dispensing and justice Dispensing as justice, you should. Fair and fair. Okay. But uh, there is politics in everything. We cannot, we cannot overrule that side that there's politics in everything. That's number one. Then number two, the lawyers, the judges are overworked. They are overworked. The, the courts are a cake. In, in, if, you, if you go to the U.S., never will you see a, a, a judge writing anything. There's a stenographer writing things and typing and you're things. You're telling me we have no stenographers in the courts in Nigeria? Not in most courts. Wow. And now, if let's say most times, most courts now in 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 foreign in the other countries use computers. Where are our own computers? So you have a man who has maybe 50 cases every day, writing judgments, then when he goes home, he has to read. And you expect him to be on par with the man who is abroad, who has everything done for him, who will just click on his computer and everything starts coming out. It's quite unfortunate, but we have to take a break. They're not going anywhere. They'll stay with us and you will stay with us. When we return, we'll be talking about the state of Nigerian roads because it's now being blamed on us, the users. Yes, the minister is saying the road has been abused by us. How convenient. We'll be right back after the break.